ago, I was uh, riding, taking my quick ride share uh, from my home to office, right? And uh, along the way, we barely missed an accident. So we started thinking, saying, you know, how many accidents do things occur across the world? And you would be surprised to know that the number of accidents have actually decreased compared to the volume that's on the roads, right? But the fatalities due to that accidents, even though the number of accidents have reduced, has increased. So that got us thinking, saying, hey, how do you solve this problem, right? And it's a general discussion. So we said, you know, we went through autonomous cars, right? And the autonomous cars, we said, hey, you know, once you have the autonomous cars, maybe this problem is completely solved, right? It would have tons of sensors, video cameras, and takes care of all these problems automatically. And we said, you know, that means the world is changing. The world is changing with so many transformations that are happening across the world. And, and that brings in to say, hey, how do we do everyday tasks? It's completely changed from what, how you would do, you know, a decade ago or even a year ago to now, right? So that just implies that we have, you know, changed on how data is being generated everywhere, uh, all across the world, right? And that gets us to saying, you know, as as, we, as the task that you do changes, the data that is generated changes, and you need to figure out a way to protect it across the world, right? So, so what I call is there are four different transformations that are occurring, right? One, as we talked about autonomous cars and IoT data that's coming in, we have arrived at a data era. The basic thing is that we have arrived at a data era where data is everything. Right? These are some of the stats. One of the interesting things I learned is, hey, you know, we are generating so much data that 90% of the data that you have today is generated in the last two years. And we are growing exponentially, right? Or even higher than exponentially, right? So, so if you look at it, right, um, you know, we talked about, you know, jettabytes and quintillion files that are being going to be created. But what does that mean to everyone? What does that mean to the businesses, right? Data is no longer part of the business, but rather data is your business, right? With so much data, how should, how will the applications that we use every day change, right? Think about it where we were developing applications few decades ago. If you look at few decades ago, we had mainframe systems, right? Monolithic systems where you would run everything, you would take it to the shop floor, wherever the mainframe is, run it, get your results. Then we moved to open systems, right? Where we said, hey, here is servers, here is storage, here is networking, go put every, anything you want, put them together and run your systems. And then slowly, we moved to cloud world, where everything is runs in Docker's containers, microservices, right? So what does that mean? Why, why am I talking about this in the data protection? Because the way you do data protection has completely changed now. Right? When you have a mainframe, you just go protect the mainframe. When you have servers, network, and different components, you have to protect them differently. Now when you go to the cloud, you're running containers, microservices, now you have to protect them, right? It's no longer one central location that you would protect, but rather a thing. Now, if you go forward, what our expectation is, we are going to a different model, from a imperative model to a declarative model. What that means is, instead of me telling what exactly application should do, or what exactly different components to do, I will tell you what needs to be done. I don't care how it should be done. The, f the various containers, dockers, various elements of your IT shop floor will figure out how to get it done, right? That's where we are going forward to, right? So in terms of these applications evolving, our processes are evolving from waterfall to agile to tool factor to take care of this, right? Now, if I move to the trend three that's happening in the industry, right, it's IT environments are changing, right, which is you have so many IoT devices, you have, you have intelligence now needed at the edge devices, you need intelligence at the core, or you need intelligence at the cloud. Like if you take the autonomous vehicle, right, we said, hey, 
you know, it has tons of sensors, which means it's generating data every single second. If you look at, you know, most of us will be wearing some fitness device or your mobile, they're generating data every single second. Even if you are idle, it's monitoring your heartbeat, right? It's generating data, right? And it needs to decide to send it to the core, to the cloud, to both analyze it and protect it, right? Now the question is, if so much data is generated, what does it take for us to send the data? Do we think it's literally possible with jettabytes of data generated, will we be able to send the data to the core to analyze, to store, protect for future? Not really, even with the 5G network, you will not be able to send all the data that's there uh, to the core or the cloud, right? What that means is, now your intelligence, processing, analysis, all is changed and moved to the edge devices, right? And it's, what it means is all your decision making is distributed. It's no longer at one center where somebody decides saying, hey, here is the data, I analyze it, and here is what you should do. Rather, it's spread across, across, and hence, as the decision making and everything is changed, your protection also moves. Your data protection also moves to every place. So for, for example, uh, like the black box example uh, we said, right? No, the cards are collecting data every microsecond, every millisecond, right? Do I need to send everything? Maybe, maybe not, but if there is an accident, yes. The video camera that collected what happened before their accident is very critical and has to be protected. So the decision making of what to protect, when to protect, how long you protect has changed, right? Now, if you move further, think about, you know, how many of you have, you know, these devices where we wake up and say, hey, call XYZ, Google I.O. conference a few weeks ago said, hey, I can just say, hey Google, book an appointment ex with my you know, advisor, financial advisor, and it will do automatically. It will figure out what your calendar, it will call him, it will schedule appointment, and so on. We are talking to the devices as if they are part of you. Earlier, we used to take machines and tell you know, what it should do. Now, the machines are telling us what we should do, and in the future, machines will be talking with machines. Right? Earlier, machines were used for doing repetitive tasks or something like dangerous tasks, right? And, but now, with AI ML, right, these machines are becoming smarter and they are getting cognitive capabilities and hence you have to, decision making capabilities are going into the machines, which means the data is generated there and they need to decide how to protect it, right? So the data, the human machines, Interactions, everything is changing, and the data protection also has to evolve to actually involve this AI ML and protect the data where it is being generated, right? Now, if you look at this, right, what it really means to us. In the history, we typically have seen different IT transformations, different world transformations in technology that has occurred. But now, we are in the middle of four different transformations four completely different transformations all occurring at the same time, right? This means things are changing across. It's just not the primary data, it's not about, you know, IT infrastructure, it's not about, uh, you know, any particular aspect. Everything is changing. Change is the only thing constant, we all know that, but this is actually changes from multiple areas all at the same time. Okay, so now if you move at that and say, hey, with so much changing, what is the future of my data protection? Right? When I think about what is the future of my data protection, how am I going to be ready, there are four pillars that we think about, uh, we think that those are absolutely necessary for us to protect our, my data. Right? The first one is the cloud native protection. We talked about you know, how we have evolved applications into the cloud. That would be one uh, interesting aspect. Then the business service protection. We're no, no longer talking about storage protection. We're talking about business services protection. We'll talk about these four pillars in detail. Uh, then we, we talk uh, autonomous protection and recovery. How do I protect my environment and recover if there is a problem, right? How do I manage this humongous amount of gigabytes of data that's being generated? So let's look at native cloud protection. So what does, we'll, we'll just go in quickly into all these four pillars uh, and talk about, and finally look at how it would look, what we think the data protection will look like in future. When I talk about native cloud protection, what should I protect? Where should I protect? How should I protect? 
are some of the critical questions we would like to think about, right? Now, what should I protect? If I am protecting earlier, I was just protecting my storage. Now with cloud native uh, applications, I need to protect my containers, right? Whatever they are uh, dealing with the data. What are the external services that it's using? I need to go protect them up to, right? In this changing dynamic environment, I need to integrate with container managers like Kubernetes, which are dynamically scaling, bringing up the containers and services and bringing them down, right? And I need to be integrated with the DevOps tools so that actually uh, helps me to scale and come down and go to the declarative model much easier because I'm no longer uh, thinking about the imperative model uh, of specifying things, right? So then if you look further, hey, as, as we look, already various businesses are rewriting their applications to be in cloud native, right? So, and now when I'm thinking about, uh, and one of the IDC data, this is another interesting thing I found is, uh, almost 80% of the businesses are already using more than one cloud for various reasons, right? Now, so when I think about it, it could be your on-prem cloud, it could be your off-prem cloud. But I want to see all my applications with a single pane of glass having a unified management of my application, business applications, data, everything, right? So what does this mean, right? This means my applications have to be written in such a way they are portable, right? I should be able to run it in one cloud today, let's say AWS, and I'm, I should be able to port it to Azure Cloud, Dell Cloud, any cloud you think of, I should be able to port them. What that comes with is, today all the clouds are not equal. Right? There are differences between clouds, which means there should be an environment translation. I should know in which environment I'm running, and it should automatically translate. I, as a developer, I, as a business application developer, don't need to worry where this particular application will run, right? It should automatically figure out, right, using the imperative model uh, and, and actually go ahead, uh, declarative model, sorry, and, and just go ahead and figure out how to run it uh, in any environment, right? Which also means my process of uh, various things has to be automated, right? Everything is automated that way. Ah, oh. so this brings up a very interesting question. How many of us think whether there will be on-prem data centers in future or not, right? Or everything moves to the cloud? So um, I, I think, right, we, we were talking about, uh, this is a very interesting anecdote. Uh, when I was talking to one of uh, a customers in, um, uh, you know, customers, then we were talking saying, you know, a decade ago, customers would plan saying, hey, my data growth is X, Y, Z, which means in order to protect my data, uh, and, and actually save my data and, and deal with my business, I need to build a data center, right? And that data center has to be, you know, maybe a football size field with three floors, with AC, and so on. You know, fast forward today, what happens? If you, those, if you use those parameters, by the time I build my data center, you know, you're grown, the data center is not enough to store that. Right? So your data center is built, saved to store one zettabyte. By the time you build that data center, you have 100 zettabytes to be stored. So what this means is you cannot completely rely on just on-prem data centers. So customers would make a choice on what needs to be stored on-prem, what needs to be stored across, and hence they, ha they have no, um, I mean, we, will all, we all will have no choice but to use like multi-cloud, which could be on-prem for some and off-prem for some. Uh, this means my, when I'm writing an application, I'm expecting one, ex, one, one kind of experience. I'm writing my application for cloud. I'm not writing for any monolithic system any longer. And I can take this application, run in an on-prem cloud or an off-prem cloud. Shouldn't matter to me because I'm expecting same cloud-like experience anywhere I run this application. Which also means I'm expecting you know, various services to be run automatically and provide something like consumption as a service, uh, scalability as a service, and so on. And I should be able to protect my data wherever I run. I get the same data protection, whether I run on the cloud, whether I run on Amazon, Azure, or on-prem cloud, right? That, that, that's the way we want to think and say the environment protection, environment setup and protection is automatic in nature, and the application developer thinks it, just, it should just work. 
I don't need to worry about my application environment or my data protection. <coughs> so now moving on to say, hey, you know, we talked about how data protection has changed from just protecting my storage into protecting my applications and business services, uh, right? So if you think about business service protection, it's no longer just about the data, uh, but you know, it's about protecting the overall environment. So earlier I was protecting just the storage. We said, you know, we moved into app consistent uh, protection, which is, you know, integrate with my databases, integrate with my VMware. Uh, and, and now I think about saying, hey, you know, I protect my database, protect my VMs. In future, we're talking about saying protect my business application, right? I, I'm not thinking databases. I'm thinking protect my business application. And it will figure out what all the business application needs to run and will protect. Right? So, and this becomes very important when I'm thinking about low RPOs uh, or close to zero RPOs, uh, where the decision making process of what is running, what to protect, what to recover is dynamic in nature. And all this has to be automated, orchestrated uh, on the fly. Right? It has to be protected, you know, because this includes not only your compute, storage, networking, but any services that are running along, your, uh, along in the cloud that your business application depends on. Right? Um, now, if you move further, autonomous protection. When we talk about autonomous protection, we, we're thinking, you know, what should I protect automatically? What should I recover automatically? And can this be machine controlled? Right? So if you look at, uh, in future, what we are, uh, we are considering or we are thinking about is that, you know, you would go in and say, hey, you know, I'm running my business application. Uh, go protect it. What that means is it will go automatically uh, figure out uh, what are the storage containers or what are the containers that are your application is using automatically, figure out what are the external services it's running on, right, and protect them, including the application metadata and any image versions or Kubernetes, anything else that is dependent on, right. Then we also look at saying, hey, you know, once I figure out what needs to be protected, right, um, how do I know that it has to be protected? If I go back to my automobile uh, example, the data is constantly generated, right? Or your fitness device data is constantly generated. Should I protect every single thing that's coming out? Right? How do I determine what is the data importance? Right? And uh, do, as, as a end user, need to figure out what is important? Not necessary, right? Can we, with using AIML, can I understand the data importance automatically? Can I uh, use some historical information uh, and, and protect it, right? For example, if I'm doing a heartbeat, maybe the heartbeat fluctuations are normal in, 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 in athletes, for example. Maybe not normal in a normal, uh, you know, in a non-athlete kind of world. So can we use some kind of historical decisions? Can I use some background information can I use some you know, crowdsourcing decisions on saying, hey, no, 90% of the customers protect their Oracle database every hour. So if you have Oracle database, maybe I want to use the same decision here, right? So can we use such kind of decisions and impose them automatically? Of course, this all comes at a cost. So you have to analyze saying, hey, what are your resources? What are the costs and what are the implications of protecting it that way, right? Now, if I move further and look at saying, you know, what from a machine, autonomous machine perspective, right, how do I protect, once I protect, what I do, what do I do further with it, right? I'm actually constantly protect, uh, constantly monitoring your data, constantly monitoring your health and your resources and your environment, right, and try to recover them, right? And I want to recover them automatically so that you as an end user doesn't need to actually think about it. Now, we have to do this in a phased manner. Initially, you, would, you might see applications that show up and say, hey, there is this problem here, here are my recommendations. For a less critical data, it might automate automatically and take a decision on your behalf, right? In future, we will think about saying fully autonomous recovery. Further, if I look at machine control, right? Now, we talked about, you know, running in the cloud uh, is imperative, right? And, and we are going to be there for, for quite a long time. Uh, so the environments are evolving. The IT environments are evolving and they are moving at a higher scale. Uh, and these all clusters and app containers, Kubernetes, 
uh, all these things are growing at a fast in such a way that if I deploy my application, my containers start with one container and go to n containers, and they might decrease it as the load decreases. So as a machine, I need to understand this, right? Understand that when to do it, what to do it, and how to protect them, right? Um, so finally, we want to look at saying, hey, you know, in, the, in case of edge, IoT, and compute devices, it's very critical to say that the decision making of what data to send to the core, what data to be protected, happens at the edge device itself, right? And, and so, so the edge device here, by, we mean by you know, data generation devices. It could be your video camera, it could be your any IoT device, your mobile, anything that generates the data, right? And, and then the edges themselves sometimes might not have enough compute power. So the edge will be talking to an edge device, right? Or, or an edge device that is much more uh, capable talking to hundreds of edge uh, IoT devices. So you have an edge device that's talking to hundreds of IoT devices, uh, bringing in the data, analyzing them, and then making a decision on, on those set of devices there, and then making a decision on what needs to be protected. Okay. Yeah, so this is an interesting thing, right? We, are, we have talked in earlier uh, presentation also that there are, uh, you know, a lot of data, right? It's humongous amount of data. Uh, as uh, Vipin said, you know, 25 zeros is something unthinkable. Uh, to write it down, right? Uh, so how do we manage this data, right? If you look at management of the data, we are actually generating a lot of copies, right? You are generating your primary copy, you are generating your secondary copy, you are sometimes creating a copy for using test and dev, you are uh, doing something for recoverability, validating, so on. So there are a lot of copies in the world, right? The same data is there in multiple places. Now how do I identify those copies, right? Once I identify them, I actually look at some characteristics of that uh, copy. Where is this located? Now, what is the protection level I need to have for this? How long do I need to keep this uh, particular copy? All right? And, and I need to look at all its metadata to know that further and what to act on it. Right? Now, so we look at saying, you know, in, so in order to do this, we need to have uh, some kind of metadata analytics. What that means is, you know, when you are generating data, I need to have some information about that data to peek into that data and figure out what needs to be done, right? So in order for me to peek in and analyze that data, right, so what do we need? We need a way of knowing, right, why this particular data is important, right? Why is this particular data important while comparing with the other one, right? So which means I need to know the criticality of that data, sensitivity of that data, how important it is to for continuity of my business, right? And, and that would drive us to decide on how the data protection will go on, right? So to do that, I think we are, we are talking about evolving a lot of APIs that talk between the devices uh, to, to give you insights about the metadata of the data that is being generated with these IoT devices, right? So for example, if I'm just uh, doing a video camera, I would get an insight saying, hey, something has, uh, has gone wrong, so this is the portion that you need to be critical data. This needs to be protected, right? Uh, while in a normal environment where nothing is changing, that critical data would look at saying, hey, you don't need to look at this further, right? I think I have six minutes, okay. Um, so with so much data, security is interesting, which means data protection and security go hand in hand. Uh, with so many ransomware attacks that are happening, uh, which not only wipes off your primary copy, but also secondary copy, Things like cyber recovery are very important, and these measures will be automatic in nature in future. Somebody will detect that there is a data attack, right? And automatically it will start protecting different assets that you have in, the, in your system um, in the background, right? So the monitoring and analytics are very important to uh, go further with the security aspects. Um, so what I'm going to do in the interest of time, uh, Okay, we'll breeze through a little bit. What are we thinking about the modern design for cloud native applications, right? Most of the times I'm thinking about is, I will get into a state where consumption is a service, right? I just say, hey, this is the function I need, go run it, right? That will be a service, uh, and it will be hybrid in nature, hybrid multi-cloud, right? It can be running on any cloud. It could be, I would be running my application today in my on-prem data center as my load increases, 
during Christmas time, for example, if I'm a retail, per retail industry, I'll start pushing some of it to the cloud, but I'll still use my on-prem for some of it, right? So that kind of elastic in nature, my application is designed to be elastic to accommodate you know, various performance characteristics, various environment characteristics to run in on-prem or off-prem, right? Um, the user experience uh, will be very immersive and collaborative. We're already talking about uh, Google devices, Amazon devices at homes uh, to actually using, you know, our maps to, to actually go further from anywhere, right? When I drove today, I'm just blindly following the instructions. I'm no longer controlling where my destination is, but rather the Google Maps was controlling me. Right, so we are looking at more and further, but even more immersive in terms of IR and uh, you know AR and how we talk with, interact with machines, and the whole immersive applications and collaboration will completely change uh, with machines controlling us. Right? And then we look at machine-to-machine -machine integration. More and more, we'll have different machines talking to each other than machines or humans talking to each other, and uh, hence the integration uh, with IoT devices and securities will evolve accordingly. Now, uh, I think. This is the one I want to spend some time on. What do we think the future look like for data protection, right? Um, so you have your IoT devices, you have edge devices, and core and cloud. So if I'm a business, I want to go and say, hey, I want to protect my business. What do I do? We will just go and say, hey, I'll go to the cloud. I'll say, sign up for my business resilience as a service. Because the business resilience is a service that I'm going to offer, right? I meaning the industry will offer uh, here, right? And once you do that, you ju you're just going to give your basic credential information. Then the service itself will go and figure out all the assets that you have, including your business applications, ITs, various things that you are there, right? Then it will figure out, you know, how do I see what are the devices, how do I prioritize, what do I need to protect, how do I know what is a critical device versus non-critical device, uh, and so on, right? Then we will automatically push the resilience policies to all these edges, cores, and the cloud. So now you have the protection policies that have def defined, and they have been pushed across based on you know, historical decisions, crowd decisions, and so on, and they will be in much more human readable format that everybody would understand what, need, what is being protected, right? And, okay, closing, yeah. And, and then, once you decide on the policies, the agents necessary to protect this are all deployed, right? You started with saying, hey, here is my credentials. And it automatically figured out your assets. It automatically decided what needs to be protected. And it is deploying the agents to all the places that you have the data being generated to be protected further, right? Um, now, in this whole thing, we are saying that, you know, it's not only your basic data, but your workloads, data, everything is protected. The whole business environment is protected. So uh, if there is something that happens, right, something that happens that a particular business application is impacted, it will automatically recover from that impact. It will automatically recover that impact and restart uh, your application so that your service, your business continues to run, right? So, yeah, that, that's kind of where I think the future lies, right? The, the, that's how we are seeing, you know, the future will be in terms of data protection uh, evolving, uh, right? And so if I look further and say, hey, here, you know, we are in the data era where data is the most important. Data is your business, uh, right? So our strategy of my data center is now focused on data. So my strategy on designing my data center, designing my applications, how do I protect my applications, how do I protect my business is data first strategy. And this means you have to distribute, you are in a distributed environment by nature. You're further saying I have to protect the data, protect my environment, protect my business in a distributed manner in all environments, um, local, edge, core, cloud, off-prem, on-prem, anything you look like, right? And which means you are looking at a modern software design, the software defined, the storage software defined, the environments, everything is software defined, uh, right? And that's kind of where I want to stop, uh, saying that, you know, data protection is critical and it will be evolved in a completely different look, uh, no longer just, do, uh, no longer restricted to a particular aspect, but rather holistically across wherever data is generated, it needs to be protected. Uh, that's my message. Any questions? I'm almost on time. 
any any questions or any thoughts that you guys have or think about uh, uh, data protection to be any different? Uh, you can ask me now or uh, pass a comment here or you can meet me anytime uh, later. Right. Yeah, so that's a, uh, the question is how um, difficult or how expensive it is to make a decision about copies and their management uh, in the cloud. Um, that's a very excellent question. Uh, so, you know, I think the future is that when I look at a copy, I will have enough metadata to actually figure out what that copy is for, for example, right? And based on your location, suppose you are in India and the government says you need to protect this particular copy for a long time, then that comes into the picture, right? And where are you protecting and what is your cost model? So if you're protecting in the cloud, the cost is, uh, you know, according to the cloud in terms of, you know, uh, storage, uh, where you are storing, and if it's a really long term, you might want to move to a glacier, right? How, how often do you want to, suppose if the copy is for um, validating, validation, I need to frequently uh, validate, then my cost structure will be different. Uh, so it would depend on a lot of metadata uh, and, and the historical decisions or the crowdsource decisions that will come in to say, hey, if this copy is for X purpose, and if this is the location, what should I do? Plus cost being one of the factors. So it will be dynamic in nature. Uh, based on all these factors. Someone else had, yeah. This is the last question. Sure. Um, so this is what we think will be there in a decade, uh, right? Uh, things are evolving. Um, that's, that's all I can say. Okay. okay, thank you guys.